Father, we ask that you speak to us now, and again, we receive you. Thank you for the victory that you won, that you, you did last night. Complete it, Father. Amen. All right. Master John. Well, I asked this question a couple of weeks ago, but it kind of got off topic, so I'm kind of re-asking it, just rewording it, I guess. We got off topic? Here? That's probably my <laughs> Why didn't somebody tell me? So, is the whole question of if Jesus was going to rise from the dead right after having been sacrificed, um, basically my question is, what was lost through Jesus' sacrifice if he was going to rise from the dead right afterwards? Okay. I've got an answer to part of it, but I don't know if I completely understand. Say it, say it again. Basically, um, what was lost, what did God lose to sacrificing Jesus if he was going to rise from the dead three days later? Ah. Um. When Mrs. Davis's mom and her dad were <clears throat> living here with us and, and getting older, the prayer I found praying for them often was, God have mercy on them. There's no way you're going to stop the death thing. You're going to die. Um, and, and God did just that. I mean... Her dad had such senility that, you know, he just kind of faded away and, and one day quit breathing. Her mom uh, could have used a little senility. Um, she finally caught some before she died, but she was, um, we talk about her, she outran her body. She just, the life force in her just kept on going in the body, and I'm tired, I can't do this, and she just quit breathing. With Talitha, we, my prayer was, God, be merciful. And, uh, you know, she, at the vet now, she's the miracle dog. She wasn't supposed to get through that, all, all sorts of things. And it's, it's amazing to, to see what's going on with the dog that I think everybody thought she's dead. Now, I bring that up because God is merciful. There is at least one species on this planet that's not merciful. That's you and me. And crucifixion is not merciful. I've often wondered when Jesus was in the garden and he said, if possible, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, yours. Everybody's going to die. I remember when George W. was president, and that's not Washington, I'm not that old, but he read a letter from a young man that had died over in Iraq, Afghanistan, that he had sent to his parents before he died. <clears throat> and basically, if you get this letter, I'm dead. Uh, you know, he evidently had it for somebody to send, must have been. And the, the amazing statement in it, in it was, <clears throat> uh, everybody dies. But the privilege I have is dying for a purpose. I've got a reason. You know, I can die now or later on, and I have at least a purpose in, in dying. For the, the country, it was not, you know, it was right after we'd been attacked. And uh, all of that to say,
perfect love looking up upon his son and the Romans gave him no mercy and and God had to let had to allow his son remember the times we could talk about Paul he was left for dead he got up and walked back into the um, Jesus they were going to at least one time turn him into the king make him become king and another time they were going to throw him off a ledge and he just walked through them that's this amazing miracle thing God didn't let those things happen. It had to be, at the right time, Passover, etc. All these things had to be there. And I, I think that probably one of the worst psychological pains that someone can have is a mother that loses a child. Dads may feel it, and they may feel it a lot, more so than they'll let on a lot of times. But losing a child would be really tough because, you know, you you put your work into this person and they're dying in front of you. And there's nothing you can do. You can't stop it. I think father looking upon his son and and not extending to him that mercy not uh, not taking the cup from him you you're going to die and you're going to die a horrible brutish torturous death God knew he was going to raise him from the dead. You get the feeling. Well, I won't say that. I think that's what he lost. His son was going through all this agony to take us into the kingdom. I would turn to Ms. Davis right about now and say, what does your boxer have to say? But, uh, does that kind of answer the question, at least in some ways? It wasn't, wasn't going to be a permanent loss, but this is perfect love looking upon his child and refusing to stop. He could have. We know he could have. Don't you know my father can send 10,000 angels all over the place. You're not going to kill me unless my father had allowed it. So that's that's what I think. I don't know. Uh, Jesus only knew it by faith. I know everybody says, well, God died. And, uh, Sounds ridiculous. God died. Anyway, I won't get off of that either. That makes sense to you. One thing that I kind of thought about after we had talked about it is it possible because we see Jesus, you know, after after the crucifixion coming to them and stuff, but almost exclusively after the crucifixion. Jesus is in the spirit, you know, like he's not, you know, he's not in a bodily form for the most part. And so um, kind of what I was wondering is like, was the actual item, item, if you want to put it that way, that was sacrificed and lost, was it his sarks? Like when, when Yeshua rose, was it, was he um, then, you know, fully at one with the father and only in spirit? Or did he still have a sarx after he rose? 
I would, I, I don't know. I would think man, if he was man, which we know he was, he has to have a sark. <clears throat> I mean, that's my thought on that. Yeah, that's one of the things that defines our humanity. And if he was man, he had to have one. He walked with that one filled up with the Spirit. Okay. When you were with him? Uh, before. Yeah, I'm asking about afterwards. If he had a sarx and that was what was sacrificed. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. because the, And it could have been. But it was sacrificed every day. The, the fallen sarks. And if you think about it, Yeshua every day answered his father's call. The fallen sarks uh, in, in mankind, for, by the way, the sarks is the word flesh in the, the New, New Testament. Um, I, I don't think... I, I think that after the resurrection, he had to have sarks of flesh because he continually identifies with us. Uh, I don't, I don't, I think it was the sarks because what happened was that Jesus lived in that sarks, but he lived it all the days of his flesh by prayer and supplication, but also filled with the Spirit, which is what made him fully God. And so I think that afterwards he had, I think he had, had won the right because he never, at one time, did he ever uh, walk in that sarks. He relegated it, position it. And remember, God said, this is very good. So, okay. So I think he, I think he did and he does. <clears throat> 